Once you do that, uh, this thing just pops right out. The driver. Uh, you have to unhook the, the ribbon cables. And then this is the Blu-ray drive. Next, take off the cover. You just take out the screws. And then there'd be screws in the corner. You gotta take off this plastic. Now that we got the cover off, this is what we're wanting to get. And we gotta take out these screws to get it. Okay, once you get the module out, I'd recommend putting the PlayStation back together because you can use it for, I don't know, a second computer. You can even add probably a CD drive, I don't know, DVD drive, whatever. But I'd put it back together since, you know, back when these things first came out, they cost so much. But once you get this, we're going to take this apart and get out the Blu-ray laser and I'll proceed from there. Okay. After getting the module out, I uh, extracted the uh, little Blu-ray laser. It's tiny. This is your uh, few hundred dollar laser here, people, so be very gentle with it. And this is pretty much junk now. So now we'll put this in the housing and see how it works. Okay, I soldered the ends of it, the diode, and I put it in this laser module, like case, got it offline for like two dollars, and let me see, what am I going to do next, the lens for it right here, focusing, and it takes, I'm not really sure how many volts it takes to light up the Blu-ray laser, but I've read somewhere between six and eight or six and nine so I'm going to just put six to be on the safe side until I really know and I'll show you how it works okay here it is I uh, soldered a 250 ohm resistor onto the end in parallel to limit the current because this thing when you just add nine volts it like heats up super hot so it works though laser diode from PlayStation 3 but it still doesn't give that with a photolithic effect where you can see the actual laser beam but I don't know but that's it thanks for watching